Welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday at 10 a.m., staff and volunteers from the Cam will highlight a new artwork from the museum. So check this page every weekday for more. My name is Andrew. I'm the Associate Director of Docent Learning at the Cincinnati Art Museum. And today I want to show you a ceramic work. It's a black on black jar made by San Ildefonso Pueblo artist Maria Martinez and her son Papo Vida. Both are from the San Ildefonso Pueblo in what is now known as New Mexico. Maria was born in 1887 and died in 1980. Popovi Da, whose name translates to Red Fox, was born in 1923 and died in 1971. This ceramic jar was made around 1967 and it was added to the museum's collection in 1995. One of our docents, Linda Mercer, has a deep love for Maria's pottery and she helped me with some of the background information for this video. So thank you, Linda. As of the time I'm recording this, you can also find a plate made by Maria and her husband Julian on view in Gallery 211, but this jar that I'm showing you is currently not on view. Before I dive in, I feel compelled to say that I see myself on a humble journey to better understand indigenous cultures like the San Ildefonso, and there's a lot that I don't know. Uh, I'll barely scratch the surface in this video alone. Cincinnati is the ancestral land of the Shawnee and Meow Meow people, and I'm committed to learn more about the harmful effects of Western colonization on indigenous people's sovereignty and cultural practices past and present, especially as I look more closely at artworks like this one. I'll come back to this idea later on in the video. This jar is five inches high and six and a quarter inches in diameter. The base and opening are narrower than the middle, creating a curve on each side that goes out and back in. The jar itself is black and the motifs on the surface are also painted in black, which is why this kind of pottery is referred to as black on black. There's a mix of lines, shapes like half circles, ovals, and triangles, and other shapes that seem to look like bird's feathers or a hand. I asked some colleagues at other museums what the motifs might be, and a bunch of ideas came up. One possibility is that triangular zigzag shapes are rain clouds as a representation of the beard of Katsunam, benevolent beings who visit the Hopi people. There's also the possibility that those bigger shapes are floral images or bird's feathers, and the geometric shapes above are clouds. Either way, they are abstract enough that they could be open to interpretation. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot that I don't know about San Ildefonso or Hopi culture, so I won't rush to judgment on what we see here and what it might mean. I described the jar for those of you who can't see it, but I also wanted to bring your attention to the subtle dynamics of this black on black style that Maria Martinez and Popo Vida created here. I love when artworks seem simple on the surface, but reward me as I take a long, closer look. The abstract designs are a reminder to me to slow down and absorb them. And approaching this jar this way seems fitting for the process that the artist used to make it. Maria learned about black clay objects from an archaeological dig near her home in 1908. Over time, she and her husband Julian learned how to cre recreate the black clay of their ancestors. Maria fired the pots with a coil technique, which means that she would roll the clay into thin, snake-like shapes, mold them into circles, and stack them in a coil shape using a bowl-like form called a puki. Then she would smooth the outside with a gourd, and once it dried in the sun, she would add a water and clay mixture in layers and polish the surface with a smooth creek stone. The polish would give the vessel its shine after it was fired. Julian painted the designs, creating a contrast once it was fired between the shiny surface of Maria's work and the matte surface of his paintings. They fired the clay on an open grate surrounded by scrap metal, using dried cow manure to smother the fire at the right moment and create the black color that we see in the end. Years later, Maria's son Popo Vida picked up his father's part of the process and collaborated with his mother for years. Here's a shot of the bottom of the jar where you can see the Maria Popovi signature that came with each collaboration between mother and son. I hope that's useful information for understanding the context that this was made in, but I hope it serves as more of a guide for how to look at vessels like this that are made by indigenous artists like Maria Martinez and Popovi Da. To me, what I know about the process only gives me a cue to take my time with it, acknowledge what excites me about and what might confuse me, 
and to find reverence and peace in the natural and geometric designs of the outside. I hope you do the same, and I hope this inspires you on your own journey to learning more about indigenous folks in this country and the cultural practices that lead to jars like this one. Thank you.